And welcome back once again to the PCS Summer. And we have had some very exciting games tonight. Maybe some unexpected ones, even if the results may not have always looked like it. But I am, of course, Pyrotechnics. He is Clement. And before we get into the next match discussion, I want to take a moment to thank our sponsors. They are CTBC Bank, of course, China Airlines, and Chunghua Telecom. You can see them down at the bottom of the screen. Now, Clement, we saw what looked very much for a while like could have been an alpha esports victory and I feel like just about anything might be possible now. Liab Esports going up against Machi. This could be a closer game than maybe it looks on paper. I think the big trend for today is the better team just picking a 35 plus minute free win composition. And I hope Machi bucks the trend because we are paying these star players to perform and to make plays and to take risks, not to just wait for their opponents to die of old age. So I, I hope this game is going to change. It's, a, again, another underdog story with Liab winless against Machi, one of the top teams of the PCS. And I hope that Machi does not learn from the other two teams. They go aggressive and fight fire with fire. Yeah, I hope so, too, although they do have one of the longer game times so far this split. Now, you can see them on the screen. They are Likai, Gemini, Jimian, Atlan, and Koala. And, you know, if there is somebody that's going to step up and make those hero plays, I, I kind of feel like it is always going to be Gemini. It does seem to be the standout player on the roster. Yeah, Gemini is the leader of this team for sure. He has the most veterancy. But in terms of the laning phase, I, I think Jimian actually has the best stats yet, just so far. His little bonk has not died yet. Uh, very, very strong wins. On the other hand, we have Liab coming in. Yes, we do. They will be rolling with their new lineup here with Kanji in the top side. Uh, Dodoy, of course, still in the jungle. Ziliath will be in the mid, followed by Dawn and Aiden. So, a little bit interesting. This is something they started doing last week by bringing Kanji back in as a top laner, uh, and they seem to have committed to it. I wouldn't say commit just yet. Yesterday, they did swap around Kanji back. Yeah, that's true. He was nominally the, uh, the a top laner. <laughs> but they're running both. Yeah, they're, they're committing to Kanji, but not really committing for him uh, to play in the top lane, which was really interesting. They had a pretty interesting game strategy yesterday. Uh, ran the Graves mid, the Lethality Graves mid, a solo queue, uh, <laughs> a solo queue superstar. But unfortunately, they were going up against PSG, so weren't able to snowball the entire way. And Leo faced Machi uh, Esports coming up in a very tough week for them. They do get a little bit of respite tomorrow and potentially will be able to pick up their first or second win uh, against Alpha Esports. Yeah, we'll take a look at our featured matchup for this match. And, you know, I don't think there could be really any doubt that it would be out of the jungle. Gemini, we've already talked about being uh, kind of the, the, the hero and the leader of the squad, even if he may not be the best statistically. But certainly the leader on the Liab side is Dodoy. Yeah, Dodoy is the one that's starting most of the engages for the team. He has been playing a, a whole array of different champions. I feel like he's still much more about early aggression and ganking rather than some of the carry options that we've seen, like the Dianas and Gwens that have been coming out. So you're definitely trying to look for him to link up with Kanji and Xyliath early on and try to play more of a topside dominant game. On the other hand, I think Gemini has, uh, has a bit more diversity to what he can do. He can play the early game like Dodoy will and try to link Xylia, uh, try to link Likai and Jimian up. On the other hand, he can also become a carry in himself, as we've seen many times before with the old Nidalee and Talia strategies. He mm. does p play the um, the Diana and the Viego in the very similar fashion. All right, we are up into picks and bans here for Machi. They will ban the Olaf, and I do feel like that's a respect target at Dodoy. It has been a champion that he at least has still been willing to pick up. Gwen is removed, as is the Nocturne. All standard things on 11.13. We still playing on that patch. A lot of power picks open still. Xin Zhao is one of them. Uh, Viego Gwen, or, uh, Viego is the other one. So far, Machi has been pretty content with just first picking Viego and swapping depending on the situation. It is something that I believe is a triple flex on their team. I I, I truly believe that Jimian and Lee Kuiper can probably play this champion as well, even though we haven't seen it from Jimian just yet. The Lulu ban is rather interesting. It's, uh, <laughs> I, I'm not so sure about this one. It, it seems like a, a ban against, um, against Dodoy rather than against Dawn for me. So we'll, we'll see how this one ends up. 
Yeah, definitely um, an interesting one. Maybe they were just watching the last time around, but as the LeBlanc ban comes through, it is an insta-lock in for the Xin Zhao of Gemini. Uh, very powerful pick in the hands of a very powerful player, and that will prompt the Thresh lock in and Viego as well for Liab. Power picks traded. Amachi is pretty happy to just see Xin Zhao being left open. So far, Xin Zhao has been the go-to answer for absolutely everyone when left open. Uh, one of the highest win rate champions in the LPL, uh, as, as well as just the PCS. So we are going to respond with Thresh, which does point to more of a hyper carry potential game. Of course, the great thing about Thresh is that you can also play a very tempo focused game and not have to rely on late game. But for Liab, I, I think they will be trending a, a little bit later here around. And Ooh. Machi, oh, finally getting Akali their hands made on it through. Yeah, that's something yeah, that it just hasn't happened. This is a champion that Machi themselves have pretty much banned on either side, but they finally get it and we're going to get a debut of Jimmy and Zakali. You guys are in for a treat because Jimmy is very adept at assassin champions like these. I am very excited. I honestly, I just, I'm so used to seeing the Akali just rock the ban column that I completely missed that it had made it through there. Uh, so Leah, we're going to have to find an answer here for Xyliath. Uh, that is not going to be an easy feat. Typically, we do see Silas being the answer here. Another champion that can uh, get away with a weak early game because Akali doesn't really have much of an early game to write home about either. Uh, the other answers, you could just go for something like a control mage, and I think it would be fine here. Or something like an Orianna uh, to just round on Liab and play a more front-to-back composition is not completely out of the cards. We'll see where Machi want to throw the bands at. Um, this is a fairly difficult ban process because the top lane could be open, the jungle could be open, and really I think Bachi are just going to clamp down on the mid instead. And, uh, well, I don't think they're entirely convinced of where the Viego is going as at mm. least in. Well, at least in, of course, this is something they can flex around quite a bit, so that will be the ban. Um, for Liab's side, they are focusing on trying to pinch the pool for Atlan a little bit. I do like the Lee Sin. It's one of those uh, fringe case scenarios where his E can actually reveal Akali, making the team fights quite difficult for her. Mm. I think that might be part of the consideration coming into this one. It's also one of the champions that I think Kanji has shown already. So just taking that out. Uh, the thing about Kanji's uh, pick so far is that he really hasn't shown that many champions. We've seen the Graves, we've seen the Viego. Um, so his champion pool is still a bit of a mystery coming into most of these matchups. Yeah, certainly been the case. And uh, that does mean it's a little harder to ban against him. There will be the Twisted Fate lock-in. This should go into the hands of Xyliath unless they want to do more kanji swap shenanigans um, to try and answer that Akali. And uh, for Machi, it does look like they will default back onto the Ezreal. This is the champion that Atlan has made uh, quite regular use of. And... In fact, across the PCS, it has been a pretty popular pick. So that does get locked in, and Machi now is just looking to Ooh, finalize. Mikai has to go for the blind pick here. Mm -hmm. Not a very comfortable situation for him. The enemy team is coming in with a, a rather fast-paced composition. A lot of single-target crowd control coming in from Thresh, Viego, and uh, Twisted Fate. We have are not going to play this one slow. They're going to try and play a tempo game and snowball. So Machi, you have to go with the blind pick top laner. Usually they have been going with Dr. Mundo, but I, I think you want to go with something more aggressive here and try to play a topside three-man game, uh, considering that you've already drafted Ezreal that is going to be weak side by default. So they definitely need something with a little bit more skirmish potential. I like the set pick. I like that the PCS is finally picking a lot more sets in week two. It was, it was so weird to see no sets in week one. Um, yeah, totally. That's going to come in. Yep. Answer is going to be the reacting uh, though. That's going to be a pretty good counter pick. It's very difficult for the set to win out against the uh, Renekton. The Renekton can actually just completely burst you through your shields with the uh, uh, with the uh, Ruthless Predator as well. So that trade doesn't go so well. And I, I really like what Liev has drafted here. This is a very uh, this is a, co a composition that works on so many different dimensions. They have a late game angle to play with. Uh, Diego can be a great carry from the jungle. You have the Aphelios 200 years locking down the thir post 30 minute gameplay and you can also play very tempo oriented with the twist of fate and renekton so just strong picks across the board uh honestly left a lot of strong things left open from both sides <laughs> they're yeah they're pretty weird band phase 
they're they're going through just what uh, they're going to be pretty happy to pick up. And I, I think both teams have very strong champions as a result. So it does seem like for Liev, the challenge that, you know, we've talked about this in the past when they played is that now that they've started to improve their early game, it's really just trying to get into that mid game. And it seems like with this comp they picked, they want to accelerate that. Yeah, I think this is a composition where, um, you know, they have a lot of strengths and they can play through any one of them. The main thing for me is that they have to shut down Jimmy and Akali. That's pretty much the game plan <laughs> going forward. It's not going to be uh, easy. If you, yeah, if you look at the, the, the entire draft from Machi, they don't actually still do that well later into the game. I think Set falls off a little bit. Uh, Zinzao, definitely that's the case. And uh, usually Allen is not um, their main carry for their team. He's actually the fourth option on the team so you're not you're not that worried about the the Azrael late game but across the board all of these champions what they do is they allow a lot of space for Akali to operate you have tons of crowd control you have tons of dis displacements coming through on the set and the uh the Xin Zhao so uh Jimian's gonna have a lot of space to work with and if he gets snowballed then that's kind of Machi Machi's go-to so I, I don't I don't think uh I don't think Alf, uh, Liab need to focus on one thing specifically hard, but they do need to make sure that Jimmy and just doesn't run away with anything. That's going to be the thing to watch. We'll take a look at our uh, runes to start. And then an a Kali, a TF matchup in the mid lane. Maple's got to be smiling watching this one. <laughs> it's pretty surprising. Uh, I was wondering if uh, we were ever going to see the Akali back because Machi has been banning it every single draft. And... Finally, Jimian finds his chance to shine here. Good cheeky level one poke in, but they don't actually get any info. No, definitely a lot of question marks for Kanji on the top side. Not because he hasn't performed, but because we just don't know uh, his quality as a top laner all that much. There have been a lot of swaps around. Even when he's nominally been a top laner, he's he's gone into the mid like we saw with that Graves. Um, Liab are a team that are unafraid to, to, to do some weird stuff to see if it works out. Yeah, I've been enjoying Liab and TG's draft so far. They've always came in with a pretty identifiable game plan. And they've also drafted comps that do, um, I think, do make sense given the context of their matchups. Against PSG, they know they have to throw a Hail Mary. It was an everything into the early game. Against Machi, they put a bit of a scaling spin on it as well. And they, they just have a pick. Uh, a draft comp that is filled with power picks and win conditions. You can see Kanji, as expected, is going to get a bit of a lead over set in the early game. Starting off the bully potential there. As they both try to play a little bit of a sustain game. Jimian already taking a little bit of damage from those cards. Level 1. Xyliath actually getting the early level 2. And we see both junglers trying to pass towards the top side. Play the 2v2 skirmish. This is definitely going to go in favor of Machi if both junglers are present. Xin Zhao just incredibly powerful uh, early levels. However, Kanji, wow. <laughs> yeah, Lee Kang's going to be careful. Show. Oh boy. Love that play to walk through the minion wave and say, I can just discard your backline minions and still out trade you regardless. Yeah. It's. Uh... It's always great to see how close they will get to trying to go for that 1v1, you know? A lot of a lot of top laners here in the PCS really do like to go for a lot of skirmishes, and I, I think uh, Kanji's going to slot right in. <laughs> Definitely will, and I do want to point out that so far Twisted Fate had not lost a single game in the PCS. He seems to be, uh, well, to be fair, uh, the teams that have picked him are PSG and Machi. So those are sort of your top tier teams to begin with. Mm -hmm. But his uh, ability to just show up on any of the side lanes, punish a lot of these early mistakes, uh, I, I think a lot of teams coming into the start of the season can be a bit rusty. And Twisted Fate is just such, an, such a hard punish champion when you aren't playing as tight as you could. Yeah, Twisted Fate can certainly start to turn things on you. And now, of course, the flip side of that is Machi being one of the, the teams to pick him should really know this match, or at least to some extent. Now, Gemini has been hanging around top for a long time, actually goes in for the dive, and that's going to be the Audacious Charge, looking for Kanji, who's very low, but under tower, still has his flash, if need be. Looks like they're going to try to set up the slow dive here. Kanji taking one shot, and they will try to tag in. Kanji trying to open up as he dashes and dodges. Wow, actually getting out alive. Well played. 
Yeah, Likai made multiple mistakes in that dive. First, he takes a tower shot for nothing when the minion wave is about to go in, and then he misses the showstopper, uh, the face breaker, excuse me. So, uh, definitely should have been a kill right there, but Likai was very far off the mark. Yeah, Kanji will be very happy with having to burn his flash on that while still getting out alive. Takes two summoners with him. Meanwhile, down on the bottom side, Dodoy not going to go for the gank play at level four. Diego a little bit slower on this one. And uh, yeah, the top side, it really has been all about trying to make the plays up there, but Kanji holding his nerve. And there's got to be a reason why Liab wanted to make this swap up top for uh, Frankly, their other mid laner. There should have been nothing that Kanji could have done to survive that one, but, you know, Bachi X, a couple of mishaps here and there, and they, they let the croc get away. Also pretty interesting to note the build here coming out from Kanji. You know, it's, it, he probably had to go back when he didn't really want to. But he is stacking up on just making sure he absolutely crushes this lane. And we have seen Twisted Fate plus Renekton combos. That is one of the most deadliest burst combos that you can face in lane. I would be very, very shocked to see Lee Kai survive this lane phase without being ganked and just killed uh, in lane at least once. Kanji looking to try and set it up for uh, just exactly that. Of course, Lee Kai not too far behind him on the level 5, and now he plays a little closer to tower. There's going to be that face breaker for a little bit of damage. But now uh, I do want to turn him attention a little bit more towards the mid lane because Jimmy and, and Xyliath both have pinged 6, and this is where it gets fun, Clement. Yeah, you're going to have to see Machi's drop wards on both sides of the mid lane, which they've actually done a very good job of. Pink on the right, left side is also warded up. So Xylea has to retreat past his own tower to really get something, uh, one of these ganks going. And so far, I believe if there is a prime target for the Destiny Gate, it should still be on towards the top side of the map. The bot side is pushing very hard. It's going to be difficult to catch people off guard there. Um, so, uh, I do think Liab is, uh, Dodoy, uh, I should be fine. Ooh, okay. No, I love the fresh play out of Aiden here. Dodoy does take a little bit of chip damage on his way out, but, uh, really nice and, and well done to secure that scuttle. Uh, vision game has been a pretty important one here for Machi. Uh, what and we're for seeing as here well. is... Yeah, what we're seeing here is Liab trying to set up for a uh, cross-map play coming in from Machi. They definitely want the top side kill onto Likai, but they also want to protect their pushing bot lane and make sure that they can continue to be aggressive. So, great play by Dodoy there, getting the scuttle, knows that he can get out unharmed, and also has great coverage for Don and Aiden. This is going to make the... Uh, I, I think what they should be looking for is Dodoy just, just you know, sort, sort of pushing Jimmy in and allowing some separation for Xylia to find that play top. Okay, Gemini, not spotted here on the bottom side. Doesn't set up for a play though, it looked like for a second, and maybe he was gonna try and, uh, with the help of his bottom lane, bait it out for a gank, but this is Liab really playing relatively safe in the early game. I like what they've been able to do, and it, 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 it's on what, you, what you're talking about um, earlier this week, Clement, that this is a team that has been showing improvement in the early game. They're not losing hard, and it's all about continuing that to push forward. And Liab still hunting for their first win. But every game, you can see the improvement. For sure, Liab was dead last in terms of the early game rating and gold deficits at 15. But this split around, they've actually made a lot of separation. They were currently, uh, they were holding about sixth place after day one that did slide a little bit. But... You know, in terms of early games, Impunity and Alpha Esports are actually looking a lot worse. So, Liab actually has been able to hang with the best of them. Like, even against PSG, they weren't... A, the, the PSG was a different story. But other than PSG, <laughs> every other game, they've actually been hanging very, very close to their opponents. We're going to see an early roam from Koala. Not really going to get the, uh, the benefit that they want to. But it looks like they are afraid of some potential shenanigans from Xylia. They're not going to be able to track him in this play, so I like the support roam top lane, just to make sure they don't get linked up with Renekton. Yeah. So far, Kanji, and both him and Xyliath have actually been able to uh, do just a little bit better in the farm game, and now the play is going to be around the Herald. Leah bringing their entire team to the party here. Should be able to secure this, and it's a nice rotation. They had the 
vision secured. Jimmy and Koala and Gemini are all here to try and fight this, but the numbers do not favor them. Maybe they were looking for a smite steal, but it's not going to happen. <laughs> the rookie even throwing out some emotes. We're seeing Liab finally getting their swagger on. <laughs> Really nicely done by them. They had the shove in both of the side waves, are able to control the Herald. Machi just never find an angle to that. And then we have a very nice Destiny Gate to make sure that you know, Machi doesn't get any plates into the mid lane. So perfect rotation from Liab and an early game lead. This is, I don't know, this is truly a spectacle. I don't think you would have ever seen this in Sprint. No, and this is the improvement from Liab. Now, Kanji. Uh, looks to take a one-on-one -on -one for a second, but he doesn't realize Gemini's there now as the Showstopper comes out. He has to pop the Dominus, slice dice, and flash away. Uh, but Kanji is out. He's pulling a couple of Houdinis this game. Now, really nicely done. I, I think he played off uh, the way Gemini was taking the gank very well. Gemini was holding back because he wanted to force Kanji into a uh, an early Q, and Kanji just uses that opportunity to get away from the gank. He is still going to face a lot of pressure here without his Dominus. Let's see if he can outplay this one. Uh, no. I don't think so. That's first blood. He probably should have run away from that, but he does buy his team enough time uh, while keeping Gemini occupied for Dodoy to secure the dragon. Don't know if that was deliberate, but uh, yeah, first blood goes Machi's uh, way. Th that was just a mistake. That's, that's definitely just a mistake. Uh, I would be very surprised if that, was, that one was uh, deliberate. But, you know, in the meantime, Liap are able to trade one back. And, you know, given this composition, I do think the Herald should be dropped bottom at some point. Top lane, I think Kanji, this game is kind of just a stun bot and an early game stopgap. So you don't really expect uh, Liap to sink too many resources into him. On the other hand, Don has been doing quite well. Jimian, though. Yeah, looking for the perfect execution. And Jimian gets taken very low by the Ignite of Xyliath. Of course, a lot to keep an eye always on those summoners of Xyliath rocking that unsealed spellbook. Um, well played. Yeah. Coming in with uh, Xyliath. I believe he had the extra summoner advantage, right? Yeah, he did use the Ignite um, in that one. Had double potions ticking as well. And you can see at the end, Jimian knows that he's not going to be able to get the Execute, so has to run away with his second proc of perfect execution. That's just how lopsided that trade really was. Yeah. Xyliath's done a great job to try and neutralize this Akali. We talked about how that was going to be a really important uh, part of the Liab game plan, and it was going to be on Xyliath to really make that happen on his own for the most part. And keeping her killless, this is why uh, they necessarily weren't afraid of leaving that pick open and available. Still plenty of time for uh, Jimmy to catch back up on this one, but all the same, well played. One thing I will say is Machi has been doing such a good job on keeping tabs on Xyliath. There hasn't been a single Destiny Gate gank, and a large part of it is just because of these pink wards. They have uh, triple wards all dotted around mid lane, and Xyliath has not been able to find the angle. Whoa, whoa, bot lane though. Yeah, they can't find Koala as he just tries to push back on the wards, and I don't think he realized that uh, Liab had Dodoy there as well. True Shot Barrage uh, just clips onto Dodoy's health bar, and... They keep the pressure on bottom side. Gonna bring Gemini here, and that is the Rift Herald pop. That's what we're looking for. Let's see if they can finish the job. Gonna get really close to tower. They should be able to get first tower off of this play. Oh, but Ooh, in the comes Gemini. Though, Gemini. Look at how low Aiden's dropped right now, and I don't think Leab were expecting that one. They will push the gold card onto Jimmy, but he hops back over the wall with that five point strike. And now the flash forward, Gemini follows, looks for Dodoy, and the chase is on. Clement. Oh, he gets into the Jimmy opens up for one, gets the two. Can he make it a third as Xyliath gets set up by Jimmy and, and knocked down by Leekai? Wow, what an unexpected engage from Gemini. He goes right in and Liap has no answer. They didn't put any damage on Gemini. Well, Gemini was able to force the entire enemy composition to just walk back because Aiden was already low health. So great play coming in by Machi and that's exactly what you don't want to see happen. Now, Leekai's not going to kill you with the set. Atlan's not really going to finish your entire team. But if you kill kills the Jimian, he will finish the job. Yeah, two onto the Akali right there. It was a great chase and counterplay, and they knew that the go button was ready. Uh, Liab had committed to the Rift Herald. Don't even secure the tower down bot. Meanwhile, Xyliath, he was all the way on bottom with the teleport. They couldn't find it. Let's take a look at how that play developed with the teleport coming in from, I believe, uh, Leekai. 
Yeah, this was just, uh, I think Leah wasn't anticipating Gemini just opening up on them. I, uh, Aiden doesn't really keep his distance, goes really, really far down. And then Leah's members on the top side are in such an awkward position. They're getting sandwiched between Lee Kai and Akali, and they, they just have to give up ground, run away. And you can tell in this retreat, they basically have their backs facing their opponents. Squishy targets all along. And Jimian just gets a buffet here. He gets his choice of who he wants to go on to, who he wants to start this fight. Of course, it is a 5v4. So, you know, uh, once Aiden was low and once the teleports were through, there was nothing that Liab could do. They had to back out of that situation. And unfortunately, they just can't make it all the way. Yeah, those are the mid-game mistakes we're talking about. There's still a work in progress on the Liab side. Gives a big edge here over to Machi Esports. And, you know, playing well around... Teleport timers and everything, you know, the only thing Kanji was able to do with all that time alone was knock a few turret plates off and, well, big, big opening here for Machi. Now, the play is around the mid side as the dual laners have rotated there. It looks like a Herald play is on deck very soon here for Machi. They'll just start it up. I think Liap, if they just all stayed on the same side when they were pushing down the bot lane tower, instead of trying to do a... Uh... Trying to do a wraparound and getting extra kills on the turret dive. Uh, they would have been a lot better served. Uh, they were always going to face a 5v4 in that situation. If they could have backed out to their own bot lane tower, they would have taken a lot less risk. And this is, you know, the one thing I do criticize Liab a, a bit is that they are a little bit too cavalier on tower takes. We've seen a lot of mishaps where Don is trying to take the tower down too quickly, or the rest of the members are trying to overextend for, for kills. And you know, great job on Machi for just reading the situation, knowing that they have the numbers advantage. And this is just such a massive swing. You know, Jimmy with those two kills, mid lane tower, Herald, and then top lane tower, it, they're just kind of running away with the game. Yeah, going to get another Herald, or going to get the Herald charge off on the tier two. We'll be able to easily secure that one up. And Kanji actually holding on for just a second does get out of there. And Aiden blocks for him incredibly well. Uh, but that, by all rights, he should have been dead. Again, Kanji is pulling so many escapes in this game. For sure. Machi was, uh, that was a bit risky of a play, trying to dive an alligator underneath his own tier 2 tower. You could see that uh, Jimian did not really want to commit to that at the start. Had to walk out and reset the tower aggro back onto the support. But they do finally get the tower anyway. And we have to remember Liab at 10 minutes was still ahead in this game. Machi, just with essentially one play, is able to snowball it to a 3,000 gold advantage. Now the big question is, oh, here comes the stopwatch. Yep. <laughs> I thought <laughs> that's, that maybe that's Liab had a chance. I thought Leo maybe uh, had a chance to just snipe out uh, Jimian, but Jimian with a really smart buy is going directly for the Zhonyas. Isn't even going to touch the uh, Cosmic Drive that we have been seeing a bit. Just going to go straight for the protection. Yep. Playing about outsmart Machi. I mean, this is a team that, you know, you could look at a 2-2 two two scoreline. If you don't know Machi, you don't know the PCS all that well, you'd be forgiven for thinking, like, you know, maybe this team isn't quite in that high caliber. But they've had such an such a rough early schedule that it's not too surprising. They played PSG. I believe they played Beyond Gaming as well. Um, and this team was a solid third in the spring split. And right now it looks like they're playing to it once again. Uh, a lot of pings down on the bottom. And Machi, just another big sweep and rotation with four members uh, to just clear through towers. And they're just turning into a full-on siege in this mid-game. Once you lose most of the map, it's very hard to make use of your globals. Essentially, Twisted Fate at this point is just a rain champion with weaker stats. And that's uh, uh, that's going to be really hard to claw back onto this one. I feel like Liab's game plan at this point is actually just to try to saw things out until Don can get online with, uh, with a bit more items. We are seeing him go for the Collector build, which has been the go-to today. Um, it's pretty good when you don't have a lot of tank stats coming in from your opponent. No one's really building into uh, heavy armor stats, so... They're just going to go with that one. Try to snipe out Atlin and Jimian when they come in. And we'll, we'll see if that serves them. I, with the Zhonyas, I'm not sure the lethality build is that useful in this situation. Um, the Zhonyas does cancel out a lot of that lethality. A direct counter in terms of itemization. Right. So definitely not always as effective as they would like it to be. But trying to play for an eventuality they hope they'll be able to get to and... Meanwhile, a little bit of breathing room here for Liab as uh, they didn't lose anybody on that push, but they just 
seem so powerless to stop this siege at the moment. And, you know, it, it's coming at a rough time. This means the map's so open for Machi to the t to taking. I mean, look at this. Koala's just stepping up and saying, Don, uh, I'm going to chase you out of your own jungle. Doesn't stop him securing the red buff, but they're just going to slowly squeeze the life out of this Liab team uh, who are just going to try and hang on. And Machi already have four towers. They can... They can pretty comfortably strip the other two towers down as well. I have no doubt in my mind that if they just swing everyone to the bot lane, they can pick that one up. Liab is going to be hard pressed to give them any sort of resistance in this one. You can see Machi already. I, I love this uh, sequence of events. They push the wave all the way in, make sure Liab is stuck at their own uh, tier two tower. That gives them an open uh, transition to the bot side. And just like I said, like Machi, it's you know, pre 20 minutes, you just go for more tower. You want it, the biggest gold lead you can get before you go into that Baron pit to close things off. Make a high percentage play here, and Liab really don't have an answer. Xyliath right. might even get opened up on. Yeah, it's like clockwork. There's the stopwatch. Maybe the turnaround here. Looking for it as Dodoy finds some damage onto Koala, but it's not going to be enough. Liab realizing they may be able to chase this, but a little bit too much mobility on the Machi side, and it's not going to happen today. They go two summoners for their trouble. Uh, just a flash trade for support and uh, jungle coming in from Liab's side. And we have the next Drake coming up. Liab, very difficult position to contest. If I'm Liab, I probably use this opportunity to try and get wards on Baron rather than full contest here. I don't really see a chance where this is a winning situation for uh, Liab. But they are going to scout first. Yeah, Destiny Gate popped gonna take the play here as they don't have a pincer but they do seem keen on muscling in the problem is they got to watch for leak guy at their back because uh, he can just slam somebody into their own team cloud dragon will be started up by machi this would be their first strike and instead they do decide to rotate away and secure some vision over at baron pit so they have realizing a little bit weak at the moment of course they are losing out on uh bottom as you can see, Jimmy is there to try and push it. And just for good measure, Atlan snipes out the Baron uh, just to see if they were doing it. Yeah, this is... Uh, I think Liab hesitated a bit too much. They actually expended all of their wards on the bottom side of the map anyway. So they, they actually got no vision on Baron. So I, I definitely think they could have sequenced that a little bit better. Yeah, they, they already spent all of their vision before going there. It does. It does feel like Liab are a little bit lost as to what to do. I mean, I do think the, you know, try to try to stall until Dawn's relevant strategy is not a bad one, um, but it's it's rough. Machi are, are taking control. They're just grabbing so much pressure here, and you know, the the longer this game gets, Baron becomes a big possibility, and eventually you're just gonna get pushed in. Totally agree. I think this is the point where. Machi get uh, a lot of free reign on what they want to do. Liap are going for the pick, but they missed both mm. crowd control and oh, that's actually it was quite impressive Kai by too. Likai. <laughs> yeah, like honestly, I'm kind of I, I feel like maybe there's like a little bit of relief that they missed that because Likai can just turn around and just slam people. I I don't know how to feel about that one. They do get the gold card off, so maybe there's a round two incoming. Dojoy getting caught in between everybody pops the stopwatch there but the target selection is just a little all over the place and the health bars are dropping instantly the turn from machi is huge as jimmy goes through there is gonna be the stopwatch popped as he perfectly executes going back and away but that's two quick picks for machi esports dawn was not in that fight whatsoever can they get the pick the gold card Ooh, oh not no. quite so close I like what you're trying, Xyliath, but it's not happening. It was a pretty smart play there, but he doesn't have the Everfrost to follow up onto it. And it looks like Machi are happily willing to just use their TPs to come in and finish off this play. Liab are overextending for this one. They are. They this is going to be a turn with the teleport coming in from Jimian, who just sees so many low health bars to try and take down Dawn. A little bit of a shield there to stay alive for the time being, but he dodges away from just about everything turning in, and it's going to be Gemini coming to secure the kill onto Dawn. And meanwhile, Jimmy is still on the hunt here. Liab getting baited into the trap, but they only lose one. Unfortunately, they're at a point where they really can't afford it. Have to hard agree with that one. That was a risky desperation play from Liab. If they're going to do that, they need to be able to snipe out kills, especially on the retreating TP members. Uh, unfortunately, they only get Koala, 
back on the hook, and Zamachi just TP in for some easy cleanup on this one. We now have a 6,000 gold advantage, the majority of it being concentrated on the solo lanes at this point. So Machi have a lot of ways to play this. I, I think they're going to take it slow for now, probably just push out both side waves, force Liap into their own base for maximum uh, potential here. And we'll, we'll watch this game, uh, this play again. If Liab are going to stay here, they must know that the enemy uh, top laners have teleports, so they need an early quick kill, but they don't find it. And this is just beautiful from Lee Kai. Gets the three-man haymaker after the showstopper. G-Man able to dance around, just playing with his food at that point, getting extra kills. And here we go. Not done yet. Oh, Don just gets chunked out by Atlan, who manages to finish the job as well. And Machi do not care about tier two turret. They walk right behind it to try and secure some kills. Koala tanking up a little bit of CC there as they pull in Dodoy into Ooh. the showstopper and Jimmy in smelling blood in the water like a shark comes in to clean up a triple and that may not be the Nexus just yet, but oh boy, it looks over. The only thing I wanted Liab to do was make sure Jimmy doesn't pop off and they weren't able to contain Jimmy in whatsoever he's got a massive game here really well done and Likai with a great stopwatch Dodoy flashed to get that engage Likai took all of that damage turned it back around with the haymaker and was still able to keep himself alive just a beautiful full game from Machi now both teams this wasn't a very heavy mechanical game uh, at the start of things and Machi even showcasing their cat oh I just I, I love cats oh he's so oh. cute look at his fat belly <laughs> oh, that's great. We're gonna get a close up too. Good guy, Gemini. Okay, Machi is now my new favorite team. I'm sorry, but if you have a ginger cat like that, you're my favorite team. You know, PCS teams take note. Uh, the quickest way to Clement's heart is Cat Cam. <laughs> Mine too, actually. That is a, that is a cute little kitty. And you probably don't want oh, that wow. kitty hanging around when you're actually in game, but post game, <laughs> that's that's a definite win. Oh yeah. Man, that was Machi. It was it was clean and clinical at the end there. I love watching Jimmy and pop off. You uh, spoke no word of a lie, Clement. Uh, in the landing phase, he didn't find a whole lot, but once it got into the mid and into the late game, oh boy. Let's take a look at that last fight again. Good setup by Koala, and Dawn was gone before this fight even really started. Doesn't get his ultimate off, doesn't even auto attack in this one, and it's just all over. Very unfortunate uh, positioning coming in from him. We can see Dodoy expending a lot just to get the early catch, but then Machi, you see Jimian coming in from the back line. There's no opposition to him whatsoever. All the cooldowns have already gone on to Likai, who does have that stopwatch, stays alive. And they just clean up the entire fight. So, yeah. I, I, I really liked Liap's early game. This early game was very well done. They didn't, uh, Kanji had some outplays in, in the top side. Uh, especially bot lane was actually ahead in CS, mid lane as well, so it looked really good. But the reason why it wasn't able to snowball into anything else was because of how well Machi was controlling the mid lane. They had double pinks on both sides of the river most of the time, and we never saw a Destiny Gate find a pick. That, that's just no. so impressive to me. If you run Renekton and TF, you are basically guaranteed to get a kill top lane. Like, there's always nothing the enemy can do uh, you gotta to, take it to, though, right? to stop that. That was yeah. the thing, they just never played for it. Um, you know, I, I think it started to fall apart for Liab there when um, they, they go for that Rift Herald play on the bottom side and honestly just didn't expect the the rotation downward from um, from Jimmy and uh, Gemini kind of goes ham there. And rather than like actually just full on retreating, they kind of hesitate after the gold card lands onto Jimmy. And I think that was all it took to start lining up those kills. And from there, it, it just seemed like Liab was losing fight after fight. Um, and, and, you know, the early game is looking a lot better from them. I, I do want to just keep emphasizing that they, they're just such a better team than they were in the spring, but there's still a lot of blocks to be built before they can actually get that house in order, you know what I mean? They just didn't read the play correctly. I think in that position, Aiden should not have been that far off. If you're a Thresh, you just stay as far back as you possibly can. Give the Lantern when a back TP comes, and the rest of the team should not have tried to go behind the tower at all. Uh, they just got pincered completely, had to fight a 5v4 where they didn't really want to take that, and Jimian gets two kills. That's kind of the game over uh, from that point on. Right after that play, they snowball Herald and they take two towers within two minutes. So yeah. it, it, it's just really unfortunate. And this is something that we have seen repeatedly from Liab is just when they're setting up for sieges, they tend to go, well, this is in the bag. We don't need any particular setup. We're just gonna walk up to the tower and try to take it. And that has bit them in the behind so many times. 
And ah, uh, this is this is such a rough graph to see coming out from Dodor, you know, not really being able to get any snowball in the early game, and later on he just falls off a cliff. Yeah, his Viego was kind of invisible for a good chunk of this game. Um, you know, a, a couple of attempts moving around the map to try and make these big plays, and you know, the the hope was that they could wait for Dawn to become relevant. Maybe they could start to pull off some good twisted fade plays, but really good vision control by Machi, really good individual plays, and most importantly, just the team fight setups. I mean, that last fight, they were so far ahead, it felt like it was probably going to go that way anyways, but that was a heck of a combo. The showstopper into just Jimmy and just picking off one, two, three, and it was lights out from there. Yeah, it felt like Liab was on the cutting board at that point, and Machi could do whatever they wanted with it. Still, this is a pretty good draft from Liab. I, I like a lot of these ideas. You can see that they're interwoving power picks with very clear ideas on how they want to play uh, a mm -hmm. tempo sort of game. And I, I think Liab are, you know, that's always good to see from a, a sort of a, a newer team where they can integrate the meta and their own sort of play style in one cohesive package. But on the flip side, you have to give congratulations over to Jimmy. And we thought that, hey, where is his Akali? He's been banning it the entire time. And he shows us that he definitely still has the pick with the perfect game. Yeah, took him a little bit of time, but he finally popped off and dealt so much damage. Just causing terror to everybody on Liab, chasing him down in a couple of fights right there. And it, it shows why this champion is such a, a high tier pick or a must ban for so many teams. And here on patch 11.13, still a very, very powerful pickup. And, you know, great playing by Machi. They get a much deserved win. And I think uh, there's really not much more to say than that. Well, we are at that halfway point. We will be taking ourselves a quick break. Don't go anywhere. The PCS will return right after this.